Welcome back to Ask Prebuilt, the series where I answer your questions on 7 Days to Die, other games, and myself. Let's get into the questions. Our first question comes from Jane who asks, does above 100% mobility rating affect your movement speed through light armor perks and customized fittings, or is there a cap? The max I've been able to get is 108%, and while it's helped with sprained and broken legs, I'm curious if any deeper digging can be done. Additionally, what is your favorite alpha, favorite, and least favorite mechanic? I originally did think that the boost over 100% would give you faster movement, but after some testing, by running over increasingly long distances with 100 and 109% mobility, it seems to be hard capped at 100% because it didn't matter what distance I did, timings were exactly the same, even when we get into distances that would take minutes to run. So if there is some kind of difference between 100% and 109% mobility, you would have to run for over several minutes to notice it. So effectively, no, there's no difference. Now there are other ways to run faster than that, including steroids and the Mega Crush drink. The base mobility stat is capped at 100%, even if it shows 109%, but it does definitely help with encumbrance and broken limbs. As for my favourite alpha, it's probably either Alpha 15 or Alpha 16, back when there were learn by doing skills. I really like that mechanic. As for my favourite mechanic in current 7 Days to Die, it's probably going to have to just be building. It's pretty much the only good thing about 7 Days to Die in my opinion that you'll really struggle to find in other games. If 7 Days to Die had more textures to paint with, I'd say it's a better game for building than Minecraft, because it just has so many more shapes to build with. Very few games can compete with 7 Days to Die in terms of block shapes, but the textures are very, very limited in comparison. They could really do with making some more craftable decorative items as well, like fridges, stoves, and vehicles. As for my least favourite feature, I think quests have done irreparable damage to this game. The way it encourages you to just mindlessly clear out POIs and drive around without thinking, putting absolutely no thought or strategy into your survival, and you still get the best gear possible, is completely the opposite of what a survival game is supposed to be, it's just a looter shooter. As it turns out, the most efficient way to survive is to turn off your brain, become a mercenary, making no choices, engaging with no mechanics, just pressing shift w and using the right and left clicks. A mere looter shooter. Which is why I liked Alpha 15 and 16 when it was actually a survival game. Two for Fun asks, what are the loot pools for the trader quest tier completion? This would be good to know more so for Alpha 21. Well, they may change it in Alpha 21, we don't know. But currently, there are a lot of things at each tier and I would be here for literally 10 or 20 minutes listing off everything. The main things you're going to be looking for for tier 1 are the bicycle, a wrench, a forge, maybe some cloth or scrap armor bundles, or book bundles, trap bundle, mods bundles, as well as of course you can just get a dukes reward if you want and you can get 500 wood blocks. Then at tier 2 you're going to be looking for the workbench, the mini bike parts bundle, and probably the best reward you can get for tier 2 would be the nail gun, you can get that very very quickly. I usually have tier 2 done by like the middle of day 3, if not sooner and getting a nail gun on like day 3 is extremely useful. You can also get cobblestone blocks for tier 2, as well as slightly better versions of the food bundle, the farm bundle, the book bundle, all that stuff. I think you can also get lockpicks at tier 2. Tier 2 also gives you gun bundles like AK-47s and double barrel shotguns, but they're generally not going to be very high quality. For tier 3, the two main things you're going to be looking for are the chemistry station, and the motorcycle parts bundle. And it allows you to get a chemistry station without having to go through all the mess of getting, what is it, like a hundred forged iron, a bunch of pipes. The beaker can be a real pain for some people. I've never had a particular issue finding beakers, but I do get a lot of comments saying they can't find one. If you just do a bunch of tier three quests with all the traders you can find, you'll eventually just get a chemistry station. It's very, very common. Tier three completes can also give you slightly better gun bundles, like the Magnum bundle, as well as upgraded versions of all those miscellaneous bundles I mentioned. Tier four, you can get 500 concrete blocks, which is of course very, very useful if you like to build Build and don't mind losing out on that XP because it is a lot faster than having to smelt the cement, craft the concrete, place down all the blocks and then upgrade them from wood into cobblestone and then into concrete. Again, really good XP but if you want quick building, 500 concrete blocks is very useful. You can also get the 4x4 parts bundle, again like the motorcycle parts bundle that can be really good or it can be really 
terrible, but it's usually worth a try, especially if you have Daring Adventurer and can take two rewards. Again, you'll get slightly upgraded versions of all the miscellaneous rewards as well as better guns. And then for tier 5, the main things you're going to be looking for are any of the legendary gun bundle. Those are going to give you a guaranteed level 6 version of some kind of tier 3 gun, depending on what bundle you take, like auto shotguns, sniper rifles, SMGs. You can also get 500 steel blocks. Now, those are also good if you want to really quickly build something, but they can also be sold for a ridiculous amount of money, or you can even smelt them down and use them for other kinds of metal stuff you might need. You can also get 100 forged steel, which is useless, never take that one. The 500 steel blocks is worth 5,000 forged steel, so never take the 100 forged steel. You can also get the gyrocopter parts bundle, again same issue as the motorcycle and the 4x4 parts, and you can get the steel and military armour bonus bundles. These are going to give you either a level 5 or level 6 version of every piece of armour in a set of either military or steel. Usually you'll get like 3 5s and 3 6s, very good if you want to get the best armour possible. So yeah, that's pretty much everything that you should be worried about in the quest rewards. A lot of good stuff, a lot of fluff, and of course each tier you can get a bundle of dukes if you don't like any of the stuff. Fisher Friends wants to know what my first alpha of 7 Days to Die was that I got invested in playing. The first alpha I ever played, 7 Days to Die, was the console version that it's currently still stuck on. Or actually, I think it was the one just before that, like a few months before they abandoned the console. It was an update that added, I think, just drawbridges. That wasn't that good. Mikey wants to know, have you considered making a review series of various games in which you go over the pros and cons in brutal fashion? Any criticism I give a game I've played for like 10 hours and then hastily write a review for to get maximum profit is not going to be anywhere near as well thought out as any of my understanding on this game and as such the criticism would be much less well made. And as such I have no real business telling like AAA dev teams with combined hundreds of years of experience being absolutely mistreated by their corporate overlords how to make their games. After the average games journalist 10 hour playthrough of a game I'd be qualified to barely tell you if I enjoyed it or not. And any games journalist who does anything more than that is just talking out their ass because you can't develop a fully formed opinion on a video game after playing most of the main story. It's just not a position that you can criticise something from. You can literally say, I liked it or I didn't. So I'm probably not going to be joining the ranks of games journalists anytime soon. Tutankamu, who has been a member for one year and four months, which is insane, asks, do you ever play with zombie mods? Which ones, if not why? I generally don't play with mods very often because it's a pain and because I need to keep my game vanilla for the most part anyway because every week I make a 7 days to die video at least once and that has to be in vanilla so it's a pain to go between them. But when I do play with mods I don't really use zombie mods and the reason is fairly simple, I just don't care about the zombies. I'd be perfectly fine if zombies were just the same model copy pasted a hundred times. I'm not over interested in special zombies because it's always the same thing. It's the Left for Dead cast of special zombies. We've seen it all before. There's nothing much special you can do and as for making them all look different, I don't care. The real thing I would want from a zombie mod is a mod that just makes zombies more dangerous individually and mods that give you more zombies. I know there's lots of mods that give you things like 4 times spawns, 8 times spawns, 16 times spawns. I'm not sure how that would be on my computer, but anyway. Zombies in 7 Days to Die really just aren't a threat. They're either gonna insta-kill you or they're just not going to kill you. At least that's how I see it. I play on Insane Nightmare. So either I'm going to win a fight or I'm not going to take the fight or I'm gonna take the fight and I'm gonna get swarmed and die instantly. There's really no room for modification there. That's just how 7 Days to Die is. Sky Chaser wants to know what is your favourite game that no one knows about? Well, I wouldn't say that nobody knows about it, either that I like it or that it's like a relatively unknown game, but I do like Slime Rancher. I think it's one of the most underrated games I've ever played. It's very deliberate in its design, which I really like, and it's very well paced, and the story is interesting enough for what it is. It might look cutesy and childish, but beyond the paint job, you do have a really solid exploration game with just enough interesting tycoon features to be engaging but not overwhelming. It's not really trying to be a zoo simulator or anything, it's just a really relaxing game. Peter wants to know what games do you play for your own enjoyment? Well, aside from Slime Rancher, I like to play Project Zomboid, State of Decay, Ark Survival Evolved, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Valheim, Arma, Stellaris, Space Engineers, Hearts of Iron, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yes, I am just going to my most played Steam games here, but I mean, it's not wrong. The next question doesn't really come from any one person. It's just just a general sentiment I've seen in the comments the past few weeks, so I thought I would address it. Even though I owe these people absolutely no explanations as to how I run my channel, why do you still play 7 Days to Die if you don't like it? Because it's what my channel is about.
It is a seven days to die channel. If I start playing something else, it will die. You have to do these things gradually. And right now, it doesn't make sense to branch into something else because Alpha 21 is going to come out anyway. All the new subscribers I'm going to be getting in the next couple of months are going to be for 7 Days to Die. So I might as well just ride the Alpha 21 wave, get myself up to like, you know, 30, 40, maybe even 50,000 subscribers from that in a couple of months, and slowly branch out to other games during the undoubtedly long period between Alpha 21 and Alpha 22. I'm sure the reduction of 7 Days to Die in my life would make it more tolerable and possibly even enjoyable for me, so nobody has to worry about it going away forever. I am invested in seeing how it either fixes itself or laughing with a sense of vindication as it crashes and burns, but two videos a week on this game for another year does sound like hell. I would be pivoting out of it right now. As I said, Alpha 21 is a few weeks away, maybe a month or so away, and it would just be completely pointless for me to even try and go against that inevitable wave. If I uploaded nothing about Seven Days to Die for the next two months, I would still probably get 10,000 subscribers, because the sheer surge in interest in the game when these updates come out would just carry me. So it makes sense to just steer into that and get as many subscribers from it as I can, because then when I do pivot into other games, there's a higher number of people who are going to be into those games as well. So it means that the pivot will be less painful. And the last two questions come from Eli Clark. His first question is, do you think you could just stream to show us all these types of zombies? Now he asked that on my guide to zombies video. Eli just likes to ask me to stream, it has nothing to do with the actual question, so I'm not going to bother actually literally answering it. I'm going to answer the implicit question here. I won't be streaming until Alpha 21 drops. I won't even be in the streamer weekend because the fun pimps denied my application because they disliked me because of a comment I made about their game. I went into more detail in the last week's Ask Pre-Built if you want to know more about that, but basically I'm not going to be in it because I publicly said I don't like the game, and that's what they didn't like. Whatever. As for why I won't even be bothering streaming until Alpha 21 drops, it's just that streaming, especially on YouTube, can be a pretty unpleasant experience. For me, at least. I'm sure plenty of people have positive experiences with it, but for me it's a bit not great. I'm not sure why, but just having to play Seven Days to Die for extended periods of times where I'm not allowed to just switch my brain off or, like, listen to a podcast is not fun. And having to deal with your average YouTube live stream chatter is absolutely misery-inducing. I don't know if anybody else does this. If you're watching a live stream, like, say, a games conference of some kind, does anybody else just shut the chat because you cringe just reading what the general populace of YouTube likes to say in those things? Just mind numbing. Now, in my streams, my actual viewers do tend to to be kind of drowned out by first time viewers or trolls blowing in from the rain and doing the same things over and over again, backseat gaming, asking me inappropriate or just personal questions that I do not owe the answer to, trauma dumping in the chat which is just just, just don't do that. Just don't do it. People aren't there for that. It's different if you're in a very close-knit community and the people there, for lack of a more delicate phrase, actually give a fuck. But if you're going into a live stream for the first time, you've never spoken before, the creator has no idea who you are, nobody knows who you are, and you just start trauma dumping, you're the worst. Like, I get you need to vent, but please just speak to either a professional or your friends, and don't just spew it onto other people on the internet who didn't sign up for it. And of course, there's always people trying to start fights in live stream chats. At least Twitch chat is a little bit more better at behaving themselves. I'm not sure maybe there's just a better culture of how to behave in live streams over there, which would make sense as a live streaming platform. So yeah, streaming is just really annoying, and I did not sign up to babysit the 15% of YouTube users who should be locked in a padded room and forgotten about. So if I'm gonna stream, it's gonna be at a time where it's like, valuable to do so. And right now, it would just not be. And the other question comes from Eli on another channel. He asked VR Stuzz on his own channel, starting with Ask Prebuilt, when will Stuzz make another video? I rather enjoy these. Since I'm an omnipotent god and can answer questions I was asked on different channels on behalf of other people, it'll be by the 25th of May. So there you go, Eli, now you know. In future, can you all make sure to ask the Ask Prebuilt questions on my channel? I only saw that one because Stuzz showed me himself, and he told me the answer, I didn't actually just guess. Speaking of Ask Prebuilt comments, write me a question for the next video or else. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.